Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, we're going to talk about the solution to the power query problem that I gave you last week, which is where we had to promote the double headers given in the data. Now, if you tried, but you weren't able to solve, that's totally okay. We're going to take a look at step by step. How do we build the solution uh, of the particular problem? No further ado. Let's go. All right. Just like a good cooking show, what I have done is I have loaded the data here in power query. And before I start to build the solution, take you through step by step of everything that we are doing, I'd like to explain you the broad logic of how we are going to manipulate the data to be able to get to the solution, which is where we have the double headers promoted. Please take a look. So this is the data. The first thing that I'd like to do from this particular table is find a way that I should be able to extract the first two rows, which actually should be concatenated and then promoted as a single header. So find a way to extract these two, so these two rows. Once these two rows have been extracted, what I'd like to do is the two items of these particular rows, which is product and the code should be concatenated as a single word, maybe with a delimiter, maybe not with a delimiter, but they should definitely be concatenated as a single word. Now, once we have been able to concatenate the data of the first two rows and create a single row or a record out of it, we then need to find a way to be kind of delete these, these first two rows of the data, insert our uh, concatenated first row in the data set and then promote the headers. So let's just see how can we do all of that. First is extracting the two rows and converting that as a single row or a record that is concatenated both the values of the row. Please take a look. It's not going to be that difficult. All right. So I'm just going to open up the advanced editor and in the advanced editor, we are definitely going to write some good M code together. So let me just zoom this in and start to write some M code. The thing that I'm going to write, let's just call this step as a headers step. So we are trying to create headers, which is concatenation of the first two rows. Let's just call this as, as headers. The very first thing that I would want to do is extract the first two rows of this particular data. So I'm going to use a very simple function called table dot first n, which actually allows you to extract the top n number of rows from a particular table. So I'm going to say, hey, the table name is the source table, which is nothing but the previous step. You can see that here is the entire table, right? All of this is a table and this is also the name of the previous step. So I'm going to say that the name of the table is source and from the source table, I'd like to extract the first two rows. Let's just see what is the output that we get. I am just going to call the headers that we have created and say done. Let's just see what we get. We made a mistake here. Let's just see what is the mistake that we have done. We should not have applied comma in the end. That's the mistake. And I'm just going to click on done. And we definitely get the first two rows of the data. Now, once we get the first two rows of the data, what I'd like to, what I'd like to be able to do is just concatenate the two words, which is product and code together, nothing and the customer name class and this and just concatenate everything together. To be able to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually form a list and not just a single list, but a list of a list. Once I'm able to do that, you'll probably understand the logic. Why did I do it and how it actually works? But let's just actually form a list. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to form a list with these two words. I'm trying to form a list with these two words, a list with these two words, a list with these two words, so on and so forth. So let's just see how can we do that. I'm going to go to the advanced editor once again. And here I'm going to actually wrap this table dot first n function into a table dot two column function. So table dot two columns. Um, I hope my spelling is right. So columns and close that bracket, click on done. Uh, spelling was wrong. I believe the C is capital. Not really sure. Let's just write it again. Table dot two columns, right? That's correct. And press enter. Now, what do we get as an output of this particular function is uh, an auto list. And inside of that auto list, we also get sub lists, right? Now, if you peek into any of these sub lists, what you're going to see is the two letters that we had it. So if you just click right here, this is nothing but product and the two product in the code. This is nothing but null and the customer name, uh, class and null, so on and so forth. So you've got the two letters of the first two rows of the data. What has essentially happened is that when we extracted the first two rows of this particular table and we had multiple columns, every column that we had is now converted into a list with just two items, right? So that's what has happened in this particular step. <clears throat> I think my COVID is still there. Uh, hopefully it will go away. Nevertheless, 
what I would like to do now is that a, the first two, uh, the items in this particular list, which is product and the code, I'd like to concatenate that and create a single word, which is product code, and so on and so forth. So how do I do that? I'm going to go back to my advanced editor once again and start to modify my formula. So I'm going to write something like this. I'm going to say there is a list which I'm trying to work with. And in that list, I'd like to concatenate everything which is forming a smaller list. So I'm going to write something like um, list dot transform. Now list dot transform accept the, accepts the first part as a list that which list are you trying to work with and what transformations are you trying to do in that particular list. So I'm trying to work with this particular list. And if you remember, this actually gives us a list. So if you think this is an entire list, and in that list, we have smaller lists and every list is going to have two parts, which is the two rows of the data. And we'd like to concatenate all of that together. So I'm going to try to work with this particular list. And in each sub list of the larger list, I'd like to concatenate the letters that we have. So I'm just going to say, write something like text.combine. Text.combine asks you for multiple texts that you'd like to concatenate, but those texts should be provided as a list. Not to worry, we have a list which is packing two words that we would like to concatenate. So that's not a problem. So I'm going to say uh, text.combine underscore. Underscore means that uh, this is the very item that we're trying to work with. So every row is nothing but the very value that we're trying to work with. And that is represented by an underscore. So I'm just putting an underscore right here. <coughs> and I'd like to also put a delimiter, which is going to separate the two words out, just an optional. And I'm just going to maybe close that bracket and let's just see what is the output that we get. I'm just going to click on done. Now there is an error. Let's just go take a look at what the error is. I believe I wrote the spelling incorrectly. List dot transform list dot transform um, text dot combine. Everything seems to be correct. All right. So maybe the spelling was incorrect. So the list dot transform gave us a list again. But now you can see that the individual lists are gone and whatever items we had in that particular list, they are concatenated with a little pipe symbol. If you do not have anything to concatenate, the word just comes as it is and all of them are now concatenated. Good. Now let's just go back to the source and take a look at our data and just try to recap the problem. So far, what we have been able to do is extract the first two rows of the data, concatenate the items in that particular two rows together in, and form a single list. But now what I'd like to do is I'd like to delete the first two rows and just get rid of these two rows of the data. The record or the list that I have created, I'd like to place it here as the first item here and then promote the headers. Now there are just two challenges. Challenge number one is that if I'm trying to add a particular record here, right, add a record here, it needs to be treated as a record. Record means the row of any particular table, right? Every record will have two parts. The record will have values. That means what value would we like to ha have here? So I would like to have product code as a value. And then it also needs to have the relevant header. That means this product code as a value needs to go under which header? It needs to go under column one as a header. So what we're going to do now is that we have been able to form a list, but we have not been able to form a record out of it, right? So let's just do that. I'm actually going to go back to the advanced editor right here and try to convert our list into a record. So let's just zoom in again. And there is a formula called record dot from list, I believe. Yeah, record dot from list. And you can see that record dot from list asks you, hey, which uh, list are you trying to convert it into a record? Remember that record is nothing but the row of the table. It will have two parts, the value and the header, right? So it's asking you, hey, what is the list that you're trying to convert it into a record? And what are the headers under which the record is going to go? So I am now going to go and place this right here in the data set, just to indent it. And the next part is to add the headers of the data, which we're not going to add it manually. We're going to find an automated way to do that. So I'm going to say that there is a table, table dot column names, column names. There is a table, which is nothing but the source table and which has some headers. Why don't you just pick up the headers from there? So I'm just going to write the source and close that bracket. And this is good to go. Now, if I click on done, what I'm going to get is product code, which is a value that we are trying to place it inside of the table is going to be marked as column one and customer is going to be marked as column two. And once we add that into our table, they are going to go in the right positions. Now, 
part one of the task is done let's just go on to part two which is where we are going to place our record into the table that we have created all right let's continue so we've been able to create the headers which is nothing but the record that we would like to add it to our table let's just try to edit this particular table remove the first two rows of the table and then add our record into this table how do we do that i'm just going to maybe come to the second step and uh, come to the advanced editor and start to write the code further so what we're going to do is create another step so put a comma right here and create another step call this as an output table or something output table and i'm going to first of all extract the first two rows so that the first two rows never really appear in the table what i'm going to do is use the function table dot skip which allows me to skip the first two rows or n number of rows from the table the table name is certainly source s-o-u-r-c-e and the number of rows that i'd like to skip are two and I'm going to call this output table as my output and we're good to go. Click on done. What I get is definitely the same data, but in the output table, we have skipped the first two rows of the data. In this table that we have received, which is like sans the first two rows, what I would like to now do is insert this particular record as the first row of the data in this particular table right here. That means here I'd like to add this particular step, which is the header step. How do I do that? Take a look. I'm just going to go back to the advanced editor. In the advanced editor, what I'm going to use is a function called table.insert rows. Insert rows, right? Now, table.insert rows is asking you for a name of a table that in which table would you like to insert the rows? So here is a table which is minus the two rows in which I would like to insert the rows. Then it says, hey, at what position in the table would you like to insert? So I'd like to insert it at the zeroth position, which is nothing but the first position. The counting starts with zero. All right. And then it says that, hey, could you give me the data that, I, that you'd like to add it to the first row of the particular table? And that data or that first row or record is nothing but the headers. So I'm just going to write the headers right here. But note that this headers is being asked as a list. So I just can't write it as headers. I have to surround that in the curly brackets whenever something is asked as a list. So I am just going to supply that as headers. Just good to go and close that. And let's just call the output table uh, as an output. So we have added the first headers rows in our particular data. Now, the only thing which is remaining is just to promote this particular uh, table's first row as headers and we are good to go. So you can either do that from the user interface or we can do that using the advanced editor. We have been using the advanced editor, so why not use it a little more often? So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this entire function in table.promote headers. All right, and just maybe format this a bit. Good to go and say done and the headers have been absolutely promoted. So uh, although we have done a lot of work, but since we used a lot of M code and packed the functions together, the output seems to be pretty small. Source table, we got the headers right here and we created an output table, which is where the headers seem to be promoted. All right, two more things before I close on this particular video. Point number one, is that this entire thing that we have done so far can actually be converted into a function. What is a function? A function is something pre-built into Power Query and you can use that to solve you know, scalar problems, which is where if you have a similar problem on some other data set, you can convert this into a function and then use that multiple number of times on multiple data sets. If you think about it, all that we have done in the entire M code that we have written, we've actually asked multiple number of times for three inputs. We have asked for a table, the table that we are trying to work with, which is where we are trying to extract the number of rows. We are trying to promote the headers, so on and so forth. We have asked for a table, so that is going to be one input. We have actually supplied how many number of rows would you like to extract uh, from the data set. That could be the second input. And the third input is a delimiter which is what uh, you could be asked for uh, as an input as well. So if you actually like pack this entire M code as a function, you can actually use that at scale for other problems as well. I would highly recommend that you take a look at MMA's solution. I don't know the full alias of the person, but he's absolutely brilliant at Power Query. Take a look at the blog comments and take a look at the uh, M function that uh, MMA has written. You're going to be uh, pretty dazzled with that. The second uh, thing that uh, I haven't been able to solve actually is that if you take a look, the correct header should not be order sales state. Sorry, the correct header should be order sales state, but 
the due date is not the correct header. The order due date should actually have been the correct header in the data. Now, when we actually go ahead and import the data in Power Query, uh, because any merged cell comes as a null value, and if we try to fill it down, all the other null values are also going to be filled down. That means product will actually be filled down here as well. And this is going to be called product customer name along with uh, order sales date and order due date. And I don't really know that how do we like identify which are the merged cells and how do we conditionally find out that which values to be able to fill down as of now. So I don't really have the solution for that at the moment. I also believe that everybody who has provided the answers have actually made some manual tweak. So I'm still waiting to kind of get that problem solved, uh, you know, from either my side or anybody else's side. All right, that was it, the solution to the Power Query problem. I highly recommend that you take a look at the blog comments. You're going to find some fantastic solutions, a lot better than what I have provided here on the blog comments and you'll be pretty amazed with what you can achieve with the M code. And if you have any questions around this, please feel free to put in a comment on the blog or on the YouTube channel and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, just like the way that we always do it, a big, big, big shout out to everybody who has posted the answers uh, uh, on the blog or on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being participative here. Uh, if you are trying to learn Power Query or DAX right from scratch and you want to build up your fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Check, 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 check.